Vibrations podcast, part 41, Philippe Reynaud, recorded on the 4th of May 2022. Hi, I'm Gary Brightman, and this is my periodic podcast called Vibrations. Established in 2018, Vibe is a book and music shop situated in Moi Wo on Lantau Island in Hong Kong. So what's been happening at the shop recently? On Saturday, the 30th of April, we hosted Steve Bernstein for his second gig at the shop. This time he played acoustic mandolin to a very appreciative audience. And needless to say, it was another big success. You can watch it on our YouTube channel, Live Vibe HK, which I'm sure you're already subscribed to by now, aren't you? Slightly less successful were our ageing shop shutters. They've probably been at the shop since the silver building was built back in 1976. They weigh a ton and are manual opening. So, for four years, I've been pre-opening them every day when the girls have been working at the shop. However, two Saturdays ago, the day of the gig, they finally gave up on us and I struggled to open them. Enlisting the help of Steve, our building and design guru, and delaying the gig for an hour we finally got them open. But now, they're stuck open. We now await the landlord's discretion on getting a new set of aluminium shutters. Our fourth anniversary is fast approaching on the 21st of May, and we have a lot to do before that time. A new chill-out room will be unveiled, and also a new DJ console for our two record decks, amps and switch, etc., We'll invite the usual suspects and Facebook Live it at Vibe Silvermine Bay. All one word. Another quiet month on the sales front, possibly due to the weather and Hong Kong levers. Sound Studio 114 is now up and running. This purpose-built sound studio in my home on Lantau Island is now in business and I'm producing our first audiobook, Jewel of the Sorcerers, written and narrated by Patrick Dransfield. There is no formal tariff for using the studio and each requirement will, for now, be judged on a case-by-case basis. This part of the podcast is being recorded in here and going forward can be used for any type of voice recording. And so, to this week's interview with Lantau-based psychic counsellor, Philippe Reno. Gifted with a natural psychic ability for 25 years, Philippe assists his clients with issues ranging from life decisions, emotional difficulties, relationship issues, career, money and business concerns, spiritual growth, personal growth, exploring and changing old beliefs, metaphysical challenges, higher consciousness choices, goals, creation and much, much more. So, welcome to Studio 114, Philippe. Studio 114. It's absolutely lovely, actually. It's very cosy. Thank you. And you, believe it or not, are the very first person on this podcast series at episode 41 to be interviewed in here. I'm uh, I'm flattered, but uh, (laughs) I'm... I think I deserve it. I think you deserve it too. (laughs) I would totally agree with you. Yes, you do. Okay, so as we do, we're going to start off with 10 questions. Mm -hmm. Question number one is, do you have a favourite book or author? Favourite book, I would say, is The Little Prince uh, by Saint-Exupéry. Yes. Just, um, it's just the way it combines sort of reality and dreams, I suppose, which is, uh, which has always appealed to me. Um, I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I, I, I can read it any time. Do you have a favourite musical artist? Yes, and it's going to show my age, but it's basically uh, Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the, the Rolling Stones started in the 60s uh, together with the, the Beatles. And it, it, at that time, my sister uh, married an Englishman. So yes. I started I started going to London and so on. But it was wild. And, and when people, and uh, at the time, especially in London, everybody raved about the Beatles and so on. And wherever I'd go, People would be really angry at me because I'd say, no, I, I, I really prefer the Rolling Stones. I love Mick Jagger. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, 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 it's how wild he was, which I always loved. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I mean, I think he was a real showman. Yes. Right yeah. from the start, he was a showman. Like yeah. Bowie was a showman. Yeah. So next question is, do you have a preferred drink? Ah, that'd be gin and tonic. Yeah. And, no, actually, I, I have to say two. Gin and tonic is, you know, if you go out in the evening, but I love a nice glass of rosé. 
Actually, yes, rosé is definitely my favorite drink. But I do love a nice rosé from Provence. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be. Do you have a life motto? I have a life motto that I'm trying to um, stick to. It's not easy. Uh, somebody really, really important in my life always tells me, you need to live in the present. And I'm not very good at it. So I'm working on it all the time. I tend to live in the future. I'm a dreamer. Ah. I'm a dreamer. So I'm say, okay. oh, yeah, well, when this happened, I will have this. When this happened. And, and, and I have to force myself to say, no, live in the present. Because basic, at the end of the day, the point of power is in the present. Okay. <laughs> That's very interesting. Because I thought you were going to say to me, you know, I always live in the past. I'm always thinking back no, on things. And I no. think a lot of people are in that. I'll talk state. about the past later on yeah. when we talk about rebirthing and uh, other things. Because th yep. that's also something really important that I want to talk about. Okay. Do you have a favorite Hong Kong walk? A bit difficult to say just one because, I, you know, I've lived in Lantau for 10 years now. And there are a lot of lovely walks. Now, I was born in North Africa by the sea. So any walk that is by the sea... I absolutely love. I used to, when I lived in Central, I used to love doing the Dragon Back. Yes, yes. Yeah, that yeah was, great that was scenic because, walk. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you, you're sort of above the water, so you look down and all you see is the water. Yes. So that's wonderful. Lantau is a bit different, but I do love the walk between Mui Wo and uh, Hampton, where I live, but the one through the, the seafront. Yes, I know. Yeah. Uh, we love that one as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. that's very nice. Do you have a favorite Hong Kong restaurant? I do. And, uh, and and it's called the uh, the Ocean Rock. It used to be called Mijas, Mija, Mijas, or I don't speak Spanish. So it's in Murray House in uh, in, um, okay. in in Stanley. I know that the last two years, because of uh, the, the COVID and so on, uh, the FNB business has really suffered. So uh, I know that this restaurant is not quite what it used to be. But I'm, I, I know it will come out again. You yes. know, it, it looks yeah. like we, yeah. you know, all these things go in, in, in cycles. You know, this cycle with the COVID has been going on for two years. I think we, we're coming to the end of it, hopefully. And and I know it, it, it rise from the ashes, <laughs> yes. if I say. But it, it's a lovely place because I always have the same table at the corner. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a terrace. Yeah, and, know. Other, and yeah. you overlook the, the harbour. Yes. And it's, it's lovely. I love it. Yeah, 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 and it's got all that sort of lovely sort of Mediterranean tiles yes, yes, and things yes, around, doesn't yes, it? It's, yes, it is a very well, yeah, scenic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, back in the day, Murray House was over this side. I know of it, was, it was. <laughs> Faced with a python whilst walking up to the peak, <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> well, I usually talk to animals, and I, n I never kill animals except for. Um, we can't really consider them as animals, but uh, mosquitoes, I will kill. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I would try my best to avoid it. I, and I don't know how. I don't know if I mean the, if the street, if, if, if the path is wide enough and he's not sort of up, you know, ready to hit. But I will avoid it. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. OK. What's the best advice you were? Given? Well, I would say it links to my motto, live in the present. <laughs> yes. Yeah. OK. Finish this sentence. I live in Hong Kong because uh, because it's now home. Basically, I've been here twenty one years. Uh, the reason why why I came here has changed because I came to, uh, to to do a specific job which no longer exists, but it allows me to it allowed me to move on and do other things. Hong Kong is a different place. It's very much you know networking and uh, it's it's more open to. Uh, to being friendly with people than much more than in Europe. In Europe, they will yeah. look at your CV, look at your agency, sorry, you know, too, yes. old, too old or too young or, yeah. or not this, not that. Here, it's not the case at all. Yeah, I, I totally it. agree with you, actually. Yeah, I quite find, find yeah. that refreshing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we've probably both grown up in Europe where, you know, you're basically trained to do a job, which mm. you end up probably doing most of your yeah. l working life. Yes. And you're never allowed to think outside of that box, whereas exactly. you come to Hong Kong and suddenly, yeah, yeah well, you, you can do that job yeah, down yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely, like, absolutely. absolutely. There's no box in Hong Kong. Yeah, which is great. Uh, uh, very healthy. Yeah. What's your favourite area of Hong Kong? Uh, it has <laughs> has to be central. I mean, I know, yeah. I know, I don't party as much as I used to, but yes, it's that's where all the restaurants are, the bars are, and so on. And I love Lantau also. So I, yeah. I, I like the fact that you know, living on Lantau, I can have both basically. Yes, yeah, you get the best of both worlds, yeah, yeah. can't you? It's never far yeah. away. It's never far away. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You can get your fix if you need it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what made you come to Hong Kong in the first place? Work. <laughs> <laughs> 
work. My brother-in-law, who is um, uh, English, had a company, uh, an IT company, that um, supplied uh, software and hardware to international law firms. As their name says, international law firms are international and they want the same system yes. in every in every office on, in the world. So uh, the, this software, uh, he could sell it, but he had to have uh, an office in, in Asia uh, to offer maintenance and support, basically. Right. So... Uh, I've always been traveling. I've always been, you know, even when I was based in London for like 20 years, every year I'd go to Bali, I'd go to Asia. So, but I'd never been to Hong Kong. And and one day my sister uh, called me and said, oh, Keith needs to go to Asia. Uh, you've traveled a lot. Do you know a good hotel in Hong Kong? And went in Singapore. And I said, why? And that's mm. when she told me he needs to open an office. I said, hey, hang on a minute. <laughs> I'll open it for him. <laughs> I'd come to a time in Excellent. life in, in London where I'd been there like 20 years, I needed to move on. So, and uh, so I came to open the office for him. Brilliant. Yeah. And That's I came, true. I mean, I'd yeah. never been, I'd been to Singapore, I'd been to Thailand, I'd been to Vietnam, I'd been to Indonesia, but I had never been to Hong Kong. So I arrived literally with a suitcase 21 years ago. Wow, okay. <laughs> and I'm still here. He's still here. <laughs> okay, so were you born in France or? No, I was born in uh, North Africa, in Algeria, when it was still, um, French territory. It was not a colony. Uh, France was actually like like a French department. It was a it was part. Of, it was a French territory. And then we moved to France uh, when I was fourteen, uh, just before the independence, because uh, I have a brother that's uh, about eight years older than me. So he was at when we moved. He, he was at an age where he was, according to my father, he was a bit a bit too involved politically, <laughs> <laughs> and it became dangerous. So uh, we were uprooted. So I moved to France, and then I did all my studies, and I went to university in France, and so on, and and uh, worked with my father, who's a chartered accountant, and I'm actually a lawyer. Yes. But the funny thing is I never practiced as a lawyer. Right. But I never actually qualified as an accountant, but I only practiced as an accountant <laughs> yeah. all my life. And I learned with him, so the hard way. Yeah, because when I started with him, he he was making me open the door to the clients when they when they come to the office, and he used to say, "Don't bother me unless you're really really stuck and you can't answer any questions." So that's uh, how I learned. Yeah, and then uh, so my father died and so on. I got a business with my brother. It didn't go too well. Uh, I don't know anybody that's listening to the podcast. Don't work with family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, so. As I said earlier, my sister married uh, an Englishman, so I just moved to the UK. Okay. And I stayed in the UK for 19 years as an accountant. But what happened is when I was in the UK, I started uh, the other side of me, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the other side of my brain. You know, they've got the log logical side of the brain, which is the accountant, because yeah. I, I do love the fact that two plus two make four. But I also love the fact that two plus two could make six. Why not? You know, so yes. and that's the illogical yeah. side of my brain. So I yeah. love that. So that's when I went to the other side uh, I do, which is the, the, the psychic stuff, the rebuffing and the, the EFT. Yes. So let's talk about that. So if we fast forward, you moved to Hong Kong 22 years ago. You carry on working as a, an, an accountant. Yeah. And now you're moving into this different area. Do you want yeah. to just... So even when I was in, in, in London, I had a big practice as a psychic. Yeah. And when I came to Hong Kong, you know, I, uh, you know to start with, I was quite busy setting up the office with my brother-in-law. But, but then I linked myself to the new age shop, which was in Old Belly Guy. And, and that was fantastic because it allowed me to actually do both paths, you know. I was, yes. I was running both parallel. And that worked very really well. I had a workshop every Monday night called uh, GPS, Group Psychic Support. Okay. And, um, and, uh, and that's how I developed it. So in the meantime, you know, so I practiced a lot and I did a lot of seminars. And when I was in the UK, I got uh, very, very involved with uh, somebody called the Loving Relationships Training. And uh, I got involved with rebirthing. And I went to the US. I spent a few months in the US to learn 
Uh, I went to a rebuffing school to learn it. And so, and uh, all that, and I carried on being an accountant. Yes, okay. But, uh, but I was doing, oh. I was doing uh, in the in the latest years in... Uh, yeah, the latter years. Latter yeah. years in, in London. Uh, I was an accountant as a, as a uh, I was a part-time accountant. Yeah, so I used to, okay. I used to work through... Um, uh, firms like accountancy personnel, yeah. whatever. so they send me here and there for one week or five days, or whatever. and then I do I do the rest and do all the yeah. thing and the psychic stuff. Okay, so okay. So that for me, that's the boring bit, the accounting bit. That's the bit that pays lodgings and food and all the rest of it. And does the that bit? Yeah, but, then, but yeah. I still have to mm. say something, which is I, I do enjoy yeah. being an accountant. Yeah. Okay. And the reason yeah. why I do enjoy it is because. I create something, yes. you know, it's like most of my, because I'm, I'm, I'm self-employed now, you know, I've got my own company, so I've got, mm. me, I'm, I'm not a, a company accountant, uh, I'm a, a freelance accountant, so I've got many clients. Some of them, you know, uh, with them I have what I call the shoebox syndrome, which is like every yeah. so often they give me a shoebox over well, there, it says, and what I like, I me, do, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and what I like to do is basically, so I, I, I get all that, you know, yes. a mess. Yes. I put it together, and then I and then I call them and say, "Okay, you've made so much profit, or you've made a loss, or we we could change it, we could change that." And and I feel I've created something, and I yes. I, 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 I quite like that. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. um, That's the I, job I, satisfaction bit. Well, That's the uh, I, th I think what thing. happens also with the account with the accounting here in Hong Kong, mo most of my clients are actually Westerners, okay, small businesses and so on, uh, British, Americans, French. Uh, the issue they have with with uh, Chinese firms, and I'm not criticizing, uh, they're excellent at what they do, but they not they don't like to give advice, right? Because I think yeah. you know they fear that maybe. Uh, but yes. what my clients like is that I do give advice. Yes. So so I yeah. just I just meet up with people. I say I don't tell them what to do, but I say you could do this or that or the other. Let's and I can help them choose and so. But they are they have the last word and they do it themselves. And, and I think that's why I've got uh, a good little you know portfolio here, and I enjoy. And some people have done accounts for like fifteen years, and I know them well. Yes. Uh, yes. So so this is why I also enjoy it because yeah. you know it's, they're not. I can't really say my clients are friends, but they're not. Acquaintances. They're a bit more than acquaintances. They're not really friends, but uh, I know them very well. So I, yes. I enjoy. I enjoy the rapport. You know. So that's that. Yeah. Well, so sounds, so from yeah, both yeah. sides, you know, the rebuffing, mm. psychic stuff, and the accounting side, um, I get I get a lot quite uh, out, out of both. Of, uh, out of both. Yeah. Okay. So let's move now on to. I don't know. How would you badge it? That is the. Does the whole lot come under a banner of psychic? Well, I, I call I call myself psychic counselor because psychic I, counselor. I, 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 I'm not a psychic, meaning that you come to see me and uh, and I tell you everything you already know, or I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I seem to have the ability to know where people stand in life, and I help them with the present. And you know what I said earlier, the point of power is in the present. Uh, that's very much what I do. I refuse to tell people the future, which I could. Uh, but again, uh, if I tell people the future, what do they have to look forward to? They, yes, you know, it's it's just like they, uh, you need to allow people to actually do the, do things themselves. So it's more empowering to tell people where they are, why they are there, and and basically guide them and tell them that two ways to go. Either now you know where you why you're there, when then you come from choice. You, you're no longer a victim, so you can stay there, but it's your choice. Yes. Or you decide to change it, and we can yeah. talk about it, and, and, and I can guide you how to change it. Yes. But, but yeah. basically, my big, big thing in life is trying to make people uh, stop being victims and empower them to be in charge, basically. And as I said, yeah. they don't have to change, but at least they know where they're there, and it comes from choice. Yes, yeah. No longer victims. I hate yeah. victims. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, we were talking earlier and you were telling me, I think, for you, you, you break this um, psychic consultancy down to the rebirthing aspect and the what you call EFT. EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. Now, EFT is, is basically based on the, the, the Chinese uh, acupuncture system. Uh, and in, instead of using needles, you, you use fingers and you tap in certain point, meridian points in the, uh, on the body. Now, originally, um, the people that started this um, only tapped on the meridian that was linked to 
the issue people have because they come from the the fact that uh, we store at, at cellular level emotions mm. and or anxieties or dramas or whatever. So if you tap on the part of the body that's linked to that emotion, for instance, uh, a very cliche one is that the seat of anger is the kidneys, for instance. So if people want to deal with the anger, you tap on the meridian that's linked to the kidneys. Now, they found out subsequently that basically at the end of the day, it didn't matter which meridian you were tapping on. You didn't have to direct it to a, a, a particular organ, a specific organ. You could tap to parts of the body as long as they were linked to a meridian. Right. And okay. it's based on the Chinese uh, meridian system. Now, rebirthing is something completely different. Rebirthing is a breathing technique, hyperventilation, but monitored. And what it is, is because it gives your all the cells in your body so much energy that uh, the, the blood flows to the brain and so on. And it opens some memories or some uh, that way important to you. And what it does, it takes back to a place where something happened and you made a decision because of what happened. And that decision, although it might have served you at the time, yeah. no longer does. Right. And uh, and then you realize why. I've, I've had a lot of people, I've been rebirthing for a long, long time, and I've, I've had rebirth, people rebirthing, and right in the middle of the rebirth, suddenly they burst out laughing because wow. suddenly they've come to realize why <laughs> something keeps happening in their lives. And they, right. and they say, oh, my God. God, this is where it comes from. Do you know? Yes, what I mean? yes. So yes. My, my philosophy around all that, if I may, absolutely, please. Is that when 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 we born, basically, because my first rebirth was very much about that. I, I, I went through the birth canal. It's called rebirthing because you you may uh, go through your birth again, but it doesn't necessarily happen. Okay, mine did, and and I felt so much love, so much love, and I realized subsequently, not at the time that basically uh, when we come to this planet and we spend nine months in, with our mother, basically, all we know is the love because, I mean, she feeds us. She breathes for us. She does everything for us. Yes. And, I mean, it, she does. I mean, she does it out of love, okay? And we come out and we're full of love. And that's what I call our life software. Right, okay. The original software is love. Okay. And then the minute you're born, things start happening. Now, the first thing that happens is just like um, you come out, it's been warm for nine months, suddenly, even even if the room is warm, it's it, it's colder than inside. So there's a shock. They, all, they slap you on God knows what to do. Yeah, yes. They, they, they yeah. rub you. They, uh, yes. So it's kind of frightening. OK, so yes. that's the first thing. Life is frightening. So you could make that decision. Um, the woman that started rebirthing with, with a man called Leonard Orr, uh, it's called Sandra Ray. And she wrote a book called Birth in a Relationship. And it's really interesting. Uh, I was talking to you earlier yes. about uh, cesarean because, you know, if you've been in, in the womb minding your own business for nine months, it's nice, it's cozy, everything's fine. And suddenly all hell opens and, you know, you're pulled out yes. and there's blood everywhere. It's just chaos, yes. you know. Yes, yes. And, and the same way, you Traumatic. Know, yeah, very traumatic. And, and the same way if, 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 if you're premature, for example, you put in an incubator, where the first few weeks of your life, you can only relate to people through a wall of glass, basically. Yes. And that can really affect your life in, yes. in, in future. Now, back to the, soft, the original software, which I call love. Now, life goes on. And when I'm, when, uh, just to give you an example, so when I came out of that rebirth, I, you know, I was not a kid, okay? I was, yeah. I was a grown-up man. But I felt all this love, and I went home and uh, in London, and my brother-in-law was there. It was quite late in the night and was still talking to one of my cousins who's American. And uh, and I just looked at them and said, I love you both. And I kissed them. But yeah. I mean, French men kiss anyway, you know, yes. chick yes. chick. And, and they were always, oh, 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 hey, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Yeah. And and that's what life is about. You know, yes. you know, they, all, I, all, all I had is love. It was pure. It was innocent. And it, it was it was pushed away. And that's what happens in life. You know, so you start life and things start happening, which are very much Unlike love, yes, and you make yeah. and you start making making decisions, right? And those decisions you make all along your life, I call those viruses, right? Okay, and yeah, you get to a stage in life where it's no longer the original software that rules your life; it's the viruses, 
Okay, yeah, they're, they're kind of wiped out. That exactly. In, initial so what you need to do, you need to yeah. do a, a, a rebalance or a, whatever, a, a reset. A reset of the software. Yes. And that's what rebuffing yes. does. It takes yeah. you back to places where yeah. you've made decisions. I always use very, very cliches example. Just say this little girl, she's four years old. She adores, adores her dad and uh, either the parents divorce or uh, the dad dies in a car crash or at war or whatever. Anyway, so... The man she adores abandoned her. Right, yes. Because, you know, kids tend to, most of the time, to take things personally. Yeah. And they think they're responsible if things happen yes. in the family that disturbs the family, um, you know, energy. And then, so, you know, she goes through life thinking the man, the man I love uh, abandoned me, basically. Yes. Now, yeah. same type of example, you've got this little boy. Uh, yeah. not the same family, but his father dies also, and the mother transfers to him all the love that she had yeah. for the father and all the love she wanted from the father. And this little boy is, is going to grow up thinking, I have to be the man of the family and so on. But this love is stifling. Right. And he gets to an age yeah. where he wants to start going out, and the mother is very possessive and so on. And he starts thinking, you know what? I just go, I just can't get on with it. I mean, I have to get out of here. Yes. Now, yes. 20 years later, these two meet yeah. up. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> they yes. get married. It's yeah. all fun. It's all for two years. And after two years, he wants to get out because yes. it's, 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 it. And she thinks, how come he hasn't left me yet? Because, you know, men are low, leave me. So she pushes him away. And that's, it's what we call dovetailing patterns. Yeah. They have a dovetail. And that's what. Yeah. Rebuffing does. It can take yeah. you back to a place where you realize, oh, my yeah. God, oh, my God, this is what happened. I know it's very cliche, but I have actually seen it with clients um, yeah. when I was rebuffing people. So it's yes. actually, it is actually true. And that's what rebuffing does. So it takes you back to a place where you made a decision. That decision was valid at the time. Yeah. But it no longer serves you. Yeah. But it still rules your life. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's called rebirthing because basically what you're doing is your through conversations with somebody you are going back to when everything was equal and when they were in the womb and there wasn't any problem or are you saying that they could be pre-traumatized before they're born they will they will okay a, 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 a typical rebuffing session so yes uh, to start with you just talk to the patient and find out what the issues are and so on what it would so you know a bit more and i use the yes. psychic stuff to you know try right. to to pinpoint what's going on and so on. and then they start breathing now they go to a place where they need to go but you yeah. you will not uh, my experience is, and, and, and every rebuffer will tell you you do not allow anything you cannot handle come up Right. So yes. you go, but you go back to a place where something happened. And you made a decision. Now it could be that you go back to that specific place because you've been talking about it before. Yeah. But most of the time, you can go back to a completely different place. But the end result is matches what we were talking about. Right. Uh, yes. Do you know what I mean? So, yes. So people might think, oh, I'm like this because of that, but then they realize, no, it's not. But the end result is the same. They, they, they talk yeah. about why they are the way they are. Basically. As I said earlier, I think it's empowering people to allow them to know why they are the way they are. Yes. Do you know what I mean? But doesn't that, do, you know, you're getting them to that stage in through conversations and it isn't then it dependent on how good their memory is or their own recognition? How do you get them back to a stage that I, they... I don't, they do. By, subconsciously by know, breathing. but don't consciously know, maybe. It's just the breathing. As I said, the breathing... Uh, gives so much oxygen to the body that all the organs start getting tingly and they get more uh, blood to the brain and so on. And, and it, in, it unlocks some memories that you didn't even know you ah, had. Okay. That's what it does. Okay. So it's it's not just discussion. No, it, no. It's, it's about breathing techniques yeah. and it's about yeah. bringing on yeah, as another state of being or mind. Exactly, almost, yes. Almost yeah. you go to, go to go to another state, an ultra, yeah. ultra state. It's, it's very powerful. Uh, and it could be, I mean, it it doesn't have to be traumatic at all. You know, it yeah. can be, as I said, I've had re people I rebirth burst out laughing, realizing, yeah. oh, my God, that's where it comes from. <laughs> yes, yeah, something small that they, yeah. Yeah, they've blown Some, up big over but there. Something, something that you might think is small now was probably big at the time. Yes. 
but you yeah. don't realize it still run, runs your life. You yes. Know? That's that's what I call empowering. Okay. And so th this would come up in a, a series of discussions to get to this point, would it? You know, it's... No, uh, I mean, it's uh, depending on uh, how much comes up during the first session, you might not need another session, but you might need more. I mean, yes. it's, it's really it's up to you to see yeah. how much you've cleared of uh, yeah. w whatever baggage you think you have. You yes. know? Uh, so yeah. I don't push people, I don't force people to do things, but if they find that they get something really, really good out of it, it's probably best to have more than just one session. Yeah. And uh, But you know what? I mean, I've been rebuffing myself because I do it almost every day for way over 30 years. And there are days where I still come up with, oh, yeah, oh yeah. my God, yeah. I just can't believe, you know, yeah. I haven't already seen that, you know. But yeah. but but, but it, it, it's very mild because yes. I've been doing it for such a long time. Yeah. So I don't yeah. have anything really, really... Uh, and, yeah, any uh, big problem big, to big thing coming surface up. or whatever. But, but it's, yeah. it, there's always a little something, you know. It's just like, you know, and then... And then you might rebuff and not realize that basically that day you were tired or you were angry. And you say, hang on a minute, I realize what. And this is why, you know. And, uh, yeah. So yeah. I yeah. find it, uh, so. I find, uh, I find it, it makes my life really, really easy because it allows me to take responsibility for what happens in my life. I, 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 I completely take responsibility. I mean, what I would say is that I have a very open mind about medicine, Western medicine, Chinese medicine, any type of, of help and support whatsoever. I have no closed mind. And so I would gravitate to whatever was interesting um, or, or that seemed to have a solution at the time. So for me, I, at the moment, I think largely I'm a happy person. I don't have any big sort of traumas or problems out there. I, I think there's two reasons why I would do this. One would be if if I did, and the second reason would be, actually, I'd quite like to try it just to <laughs> see if I did, because maybe I do and I don't know it and it's okay. affecting me. OK, so uh, my answer to that is very simple. I don't actually tell people you must have a rebirth. Yes. I, I, that is not at all the message I'm actually trying to give out today. Okay. What I'm just saying is uh, I'm trying to help people find reasons why they are where they are. Now, if people feel that they're really stuck, nothing works for them, they can't move on in life, uh, that's, I think, who would benefit from yeah. a rebirth. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I know you. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you look yeah. you look like a very happy person. <laughs> and and I'm talking to rebirth now, to rebuffing now to you because we're doing this podcast. But I would I would not yeah. say, OK, Gary, yeah. hang on a minute. You need one. Yeah. And I would never say that anyway. No, but no. In a, I know. So you're, what you're saying is you would leave that the, the you wouldn't ever talk anybody into it. Well, it's their decision to come. To well, you yeah. And the reason why I'm talking uh, and solve. the reason why I'm talking about it is that so people know that there are techniques like rebirth yes. and, and, and EFT that can help them. But I'm not going to go out uh, walking down the street and looking at people and saying, oh, yeah. you need one or you don't. or you need." No, that's yeah. not at all the purpose. No. The purpose is for people to know that if they're stuck, uh, there is always a way out. And, and rebuffing can help, but uh, other techniques, I mean, some people are miserable because they're not good in their body, so it could be um, osteopathy that works for them. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That could yeah. change. Some people c could have their lives changed through that. You yeah, know? with it, a more traditional medicine. Yeah, or, yeah, or, so, or, or but it, it's just like, it's it, it's just a matter of finding what works for you. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, oh, and again, works for you if you think nothing works for you. But yeah. if, if, if everything is fine, there's no reason why you should worry about it. Yes. So earlier on, we were talking about you You were saying when, you know, sort of 30 years ago, I think you you paid a lot of money to go on to a course in yes. London, which was uh, something called, called rebirthing that you'd never heard of. Yeah. It, just tell us a little briefly about, you know, it's, what it's you actually, found there. It's actually, it's actually uh, a, it was a seminar called the LRT, the Loving Relationships Training, run by a woman called Sandra Ray. So I went to this seminar completely. Uh, I had no idea what it was about, but a friend of mine who's a, a tarot reader and a very good psychic told me, oh, it's good for you, go. On the Saturday night, there's a group rebirth, and I had no idea about it. I had no idea what it was. And there were about 200 people in a hotel in central London, 
and we all lie down on the floor and started breathing. And uh, and I got the most amazing experience because I got stuck in, in my breath because I, it was not uh, monitored properly. But then the woman, Sandra, came to me and said to me, uh, uh, Philip, what are you hanging on to? Because if you don't breathe properly, uh, the, 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 the breath during a rebirth is, is connected, inhale and exhale, but you can't push on either. Yeah. So it's, but it's, it's like a rhythm, it's a natural, you know, natural rhythm, yeah. but you can't push on the in inhale or the exhale. One. And if you do, it creates something called tetany, which I had. And uh, so you're a bit like stiff in the, in the yes. hands and, uh, and the, the mouth looks a little bit as if you've had too many uh, facelifts. You know? yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. so she said, what are you hanging on to? And I remember saying, all I want is for them to love me. And then uh, so everything disappeared and I, and I fell asleep. And then when I woke up, I woke up like I felt like a little baby. I was full of love. And, and I yes. had about five people around me looking at me say, oh, yeah. my God, you look like a newly born baby. <laughs> and I was in my... I think I was in my forties then, so yeah. so I was not a baby at all. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. you know, you 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 teach what you need to learn. So I had I had to learn more about it. So I, I ended up be, becoming a rebel. Yeah. So I got really involved in, in London with a group of people, and then I went to the U.S. and trained um, in a rebirthing school for a few months. And, yeah, and that's how it all started. Okay. And so that's the, the, the sort of rebirthing side of, of what you do, which generally it's, um, it's through discussions and, and breathing exercises that may tap into something that's there, maybe subconsciously, yeah. um, that once brought forward could improve current situations. Sure. The other thing that you mentioned was EFT. Yeah. So how, how does that work? Are they complementary to each other? Are they separate? It, it all depends. Uh, EFT, based on the fact that we store uh, emotional memories uh, at cellular level, so EFT works on the same uh, meridians as uh, Chinese acupuncture, but uh, you use fingers instead of uh, needles. With EFT, you deal more with a specific issue. Yes. Okay. So, for instance, uh, you could you could actually deal with people that are um, completely. Uh, addicted to cigarettes through smoking right and so you get yeah. you, you get somebody that's that's really craving for a cigarette you could yeah. be craving for a glass of wine you could be craving but cravings are really good and you yeah. start tapping and right. uh, on the on the craving and you say well if you if you want a cigarette right now between one and ten between zero and ten how much do you want it and say oh my god i want it for 12 you know i'm yeah. uh, i'm just and you start tapping and you do for a few sessions a few okay. a few rounds a few rounds a few rounds yeah. and you can actually bring it down to almost zero okay and that person actually can actually walk out and say i don't want a cigarette now anymore yeah and that's okay. what it does. So yes. emotions and feelings are stored in the body because basically when, you, when you're addicted to cigarette, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's a physical feeling. I, mean, I used yes. to smoke a lot, yes. a long time ago. Yeah. And, you know, you feel it physically when you have this craving. Yeah. I mean, it's obvious. And, and, and yeah. tapping really helps. Okay. So, so rebirthing is more to do with going back to a place something happened, but you, you can't remember what it is. Whatever. Yeah. Tapping is more to do with dealing with a very specific issue. Yeah. Anger, craving, things like that. Yeah. So somebody would specifically go to you and say, it's then rather so. If if you know, perhaps my simplistic view of it is that the the rebirthing is something which is tapping into your mind, your brain, your subconscious, and helping you resolve something from that perspective. Whereas the EFT is tapping into, as you say, these Chinese meridian lines yeah. that we have in our body. Yeah. And, it, and in tapping on those can help you with a health issue, it can. not necessarily it can. a mind issue. It... If I came to you today and said, right, OK, Philippe, can I have a rebirthing session, H how would that take, w what would we do? Where would we go? So we'd what have, would a, you do? We'd, we'd, we'd have a, a chat for about you know, 15, 20 minutes or f half hour, depending. And then you yeah. start lying down and, and, and uh, I, I don't time the lying down. So you can, you, you, you can breathe for half hour, you can breathe. Some people are finished in 20 minutes. Some people take two hours. Uh, yeah. Because some people keep falling asleep. So I have to keep w waking them up. Okay. And, yeah. um, and then when you come out, you tell me where you went and what happened and, and so on and so on. So they go into sort of almost like a sort of... Um, alter state. Yeah, yeah, into an altered yeah, state, sort which of, would yeah, be yeah, yeah. like um, but I'm, hypnosis I'm, but, type uh, but, state. But I'm there to monitor. Okay, so yes. what I want to add to that also is 
what I've learned with rebuffing through personal experience and seeing with other people also is you can't change the past. No. But you can actually look at it from a different angle. Yes. And what happened to me, which was very significant, is uh, I used to rebirth with this woman back in London, and and we were talking about anger and so on, and I was talking about, you know, I, I've always had problems with my father, uh, meaning that I didn't have any problem with him. He, I grew up thinking I didn't even have a father. He was there all the time. He looked after us, but never a conversation, nothing, and I was scared of him. Yeah. Anyway, so I started rebirthing, and uh, something came up that was... I was not quite sure what to do with, but uh, I confronted my mother. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah. she was still in France at the time. But uh, and uh, so I called her and I said, uh, can you actually be honest with me and tell me? Uh, yeah. Is that my dad? Yes. And um, my mother didn't like to be um, taken by surprise and, she, and I took her by surprise and I'm glad I did because she oh well you know it was just after the war and we were short of meat so I went to see somebody and so on and I said uh uh okay fine uh, okay so yes. what I realized is that my father probably thought I wasn't his yes but although he thought I wasn't his I'm the only one of three because you know, I'm the last one of three that he put through university and so on and so on and I realized through rebirthing and through bringing that up that well okay but now now I reckon considering he didn't think I was, he was my dad he didn't do a bad job yes yes and the following day and the following day I went to see yeah. my uh, rebirther yeah. yeah and she opened the door and she looked at yeah. me and she said oh she said you've lost your anger <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I yes. said yes so basically it got it in perspective. Well, I didn't change the past because the past was the past. But yeah. I, I realized, I, I, I changed the way I looked at it. And I stopped blaming him. I yeah. stopped hating him because I, I went through a stage when, especially when I was a teenager, uh, I found out things, you know, and I used to hate him. And all that went yeah. completely. Yeah. And I realized, yeah. Yeah. okay, well, at the end of the day, you're not so much a bad person. Do you yes, know what I mean? Yes, so yeah. I can't, I didn't change anything, yeah. but I, ref, I, I didn't Resolved rewrite it. it. I didn't rewrite it, but in my mind, I rewrote it. Yeah. I saw it from a different angle. Basically, we'll give out uh, your contact details. You you run a weekly session, do you, or regular sessions? How, no, how do you do things? It, it all depends. I mean, I'm linked to one of the new centers that has opened here in, uh, in okay. Uruguay. Right. Uh, the wellness center. But uh, I can practice from there or I can practice from home. Okay. Most people work, so usually, usually sessions are in the evening. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. at weekends, I don't mind working on Saturdays. Right. And you're based here on Lantau Island. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, and available, would you just say that you would limit to people living on Lantau or no. practicing here? No. Well, that's great. Um, that just remains for me to say, Philippe, Thank you very much for coming today. Yeah, thanks for having me at Studio 114. You can listen to all our Vibrations podcasts published on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Amazon Music, TuneIn and Alexa, Stitcher, Listen Notes, Player FM, SoundCloud, and I don't think I've left anything out of the list, have I there? Or you can watch on our YouTube channel under Live Vibe HK or follow the links from my website at vibehk.com. The opening and closing music comes from Celestial and is called Green Island Dub and is on the Retrospect vinyl album, on sale at Vibe. Finally, a reminder that Vibe is open seven days a week, every day of the year, from 12 noon until approximately 6.30pm. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for listening to the 41st Vibe Book and Music Shop podcast called Vibrations. I'm Gary Brightman. You get my vibe? Can you imagine what this old island must have looked like to those Dutch sailors when they first saw it? Fresh green. Like a dream of a new world. They must have held their breath. Afraid it would disappear before they could touch it.